Okay, welcome everyone. This is uh, Premier Chess Fall 2020 Adult Intermediate Week 10. And we're going to be analyzing some of the games and positions from the Queen's Gambit Netflix series that's been sweeping the world. Um, and my, uh, my eight-year-old daughter, I was telling her about it, and, uh, and she was saying that it's so sad that uh, it's, um, it's not true that it's a fictional account of, of this chess player you know because you, you can imagine that this kind of series is, is inspiring a lot of girls and women throughout the world to, to play chess right to having a, a heroine uh as the focus uh, so so yeah and, and i told i told my daughter that um i don't think it even matters that it's fictional it doesn't even matter because the goal it has been achieved nevertheless like chess interest has been awakened all over the world you know i'm i'm like compiling um not only videos analyzing that the games in uh, in the in the series but also videos you know interviews with the director with uh, bruce pendolfini gary kasparov who was uh, consulted for the games and um and then and then uh, interviews with the actors and actresses just to hear about more about it and, and there's other people who are just analyzing the whole series on their own channel um and now and also compiling um articles and blog posts there's so many I'm like i can't keep up with how many posts people are doing about it it's like non-stop every time i look around, look it's like more and more so it's really made uh, an enormous wave and it sparked uh, an explosion of chess interest and um, i saw i saw a great um um article that they were saying that uh uh, just because of the lockdown this year, um, chess sales in Walmart, for example, has gone up, they said, 178% just because of the lockdown, because people are indoors and, you know, don't know what to do with themselves. They say, let me, let me learn chess. But as a result of this Netflix series, um, the demand for, um, for chess sets has gone up over 1,000%. 10 times, 10 times just because of this series. So you can, you can see how it doesn't even matter that it's false, right? People are getting really interested in chess, which is cool. She, she made chess look cool and sexy. <laughs> and that's gotta be hard to do, right? Cool and sexy. How many of us can, it was impossible. Before how many that. of us can make chess look cool and sexy? I don't know. I don't think I can. <laughs> look at me. You, Speak you for know? yourself. <laughs> like, I, you can tell your daughter about Judith Polgar if she wants to. No, that's true. No, that's true. Yeah, yeah. There are some great uh, female players. And, and you know, did, did, did any of you see um, or, or hear about Magnus Carlsen's um, response about the series? Anybody hear about that? So, so, he, so he gave it a five out of six stars. Yeah. Right? And he said he loved it. Overall, it was really great. Um, pretty realistic. But so, some of the more unrealistic aspects of it was her her very very rapid rise among the chess ranks and even though she was like studying books and and games of other players he said he, she made it look too easy <laughs> and he's like even for Magnus Cross he's like that's not it's not that easy <laughs> to rise so fast um so so yeah that, that was um uh, that was a major thing and, and also he's saying incidentally about um in the chess world you know how they have this um uh, this um, separation of the genders, you know, they have the women's section and then they have everyone else's section, which is really weird, you know, and then and same thing with titles. They have the women's titles and they have the men's titles. Right. So, you know, it's it's kind of weird like that. And uh, and so he was saying that if 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 they just did away with that, you know, women would have a chance maybe to just progress along with the men. I, I mean, why is there separate titles? It just doesn't even make sense to me. Um, so. So yeah, Judith Polgar, she's a, she's amazing, you know, um, amazing player too because she's she's crushed through all those um, barriers and she's gotten the you know the male GM title and she's yeah pretty amazing. So so I guess to be fair though, there isn't women's and men's. It's just there's women's and open, right? Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I guess they can join the open. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I know. It's just I don't know. It's just weird. It's like there's no men's section, right? There's a women's section, but uh, yeah, no, there's no men's section. It's there's kinda... an open section. I mean, it's not like it's a sport. Like I don't know. That's more understandable if it's a sport, right? Like soccer or basketball, right? That's understandable. You know, physique. You know, women tend to be a little bit less muscular. Okay, it makes sense. But like when you're talking about the brain, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So well, I think I might. 
not sure that it's restricted in something like tennis. I mean, the U.S. Open is the men's is open. The oh, really? Is the U.S. Women's Open. Yeah. So, so yeah, even, I mean, even so, even in tennis, it's restricted. I don't think it is. I don't think so. I think I think a woman can enter. I mean, they they can't compete because in a in a sport that's so heavily re, you know requires strength. Yeah. It's obviously a, you know I'm sorry, it's just an inescapable disadvantage. I mean, I'm sure yeah. it's probably anathema in certain circles to say that but it's yeah simply the truth all right yeah yeah so uh so yeah some, some interesting things to think about so let's look at some of the positions from the series so this is um this is uh one of the puzzles that was brought to her she was in benny's apartment and a couple of guys came over some of them they were like top grandmasters and one guy sits down and it's like here's a position uh white to move mate in three and what's the move? And of course, she comes up with the answer in like a few seconds, <laughs> even though even though there's another woman there that was like talking to her and distracting her and everything. Um, she got it. Yeah. So white to move uh, mate in three. What is the best move here? Okay, it looks like we want to get the knight to e8. That would be checkmate. So I'm thinking king d7 and then knight d6 and e8. Nice, nice. Yeah, king d7 is the key move. Yeah, yeah, because this knight is out of play, needs to get into play, and bringing the knight to d8 or c5 um, doesn't really work uh, because it's uh, it's going to be conflicting too much with this knight. So, so yeah, knight. <clears throat> so king d7 is the key move, and now and now black has two possibilities. Oh, by the way, king d7 was very a very important move. I mean, the king could have moved to either of these squares, but those are all the uh, less ideal squares. Why? Why do you think? You have to cut off king e7. Gives up e7. Yeah, exactly. So we want to we want to constrain the king. Make sure uh, give him as little play, counterplay as possible. Yeah. So king d7 maintains control over e7. So only has two moves: king g7 and bishop and bishop g7. So let's look at let's look at bishop g7 first. Now, what do you do? Knight d6. Just knight d6. Knight d6. And, and, and then doesn't and then work. doesn't matter where he goes. Now what? Knight d8. Knight d8, yeah. So very good. Good, good. So so there's that. And then what about king g7? Now what do you do? Knight d6 again. Okay, knight d6 again. And now again. f5 is the key square depending on where okay, the king so, goes. So now let's say let's say he goes to king f8. Now what do you do? Knight h7. Ah, uh, no, wait. Knight uh, e6. Knight e6. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Controlling g7, right? Very important. Delivering a check. Mate. Very nice coordination with the minor pieces. Very nice. So now, um, all right. So we know if if king f6, it's it's knight e8. So what about king h6? What do you knight f5. Yep. Knight f5. Very nice. Check and controlling g7. And the bishop on f7 controlling the light squares. So very nice, um, very nice coordination again with the minor pieces. So yeah, good. She got that in a few seconds. So very nice. Nice job. All right. So let's go on to the next one. So this is the uh, this is the game. She was in the orphanage and she was probably like nine. And uh, she was playing uh, the janitor, Scheibel. And and then this other guy came. I think he was like the head of the chess club of another school. He wanted to test out her skills, so she's she's playing both of them at the same time, and uh, so she's white. And this is actually um, a famous game between Reddy and Tartakower, uh, Vienna, uh, nineteen ten. Anybody familiar with the game? Just by, by the description of it? No. Okay. All right. So I think you guys will know pretty quickly as we go through. So Harmon is white. So we have a typical um, Karakhan, knight c6, okay, and takes, takes, okay, knight f6. So here, you know, there's a couple of possibilities, maybe knight g5, maybe um, maybe takes, maybe even come back. Um, but here she chose queen d3, okay, and now e5. D takes so so it looks like it's sacrificing of a pawn, but not really because queen comes over and delivers a check, picks up the pawn pretty quickly. Bishop d2, queen takes, and now uh, castles. Anybody recognize the position now? Nobody. Okay, 
It was a very famous game. All right. So now um, it looks like uh, this knight is lost, right? The queen can take it and the knight can take it. But uh, both moves are losing. You have the pin on e1 either way. For different. Say again? I said you have the pin on e1 either way. Okay. So queen takes. Uh, yeah. Rookie one wins the queen. Good. Um, if the knight takes. F3, you do have. You, do you, do, you do. Say again? You can just play f3 first and then pin. Yeah. You, you can do that. Um, and you're going to win your piece back. But there's actually a much stronger move than knight than rookie one in this position. What do you Bishop think? Bishop f4 also looks interesting. Bishop f4. Maybe not quite the right placement. No, actually, it actually doesn't discovered. work. It's check. check. Oh, yeah. Check. Yeah. Doesn't work. What else do you think? Maybe maybe just f4. <laughs> there's a queen, queen to d8 followed by bishop g5. Double exactly. Check. Yes. This is a very powerful, uh, very powerful example of a deflective sacrifice luring the king onto uh, the d file and then using the discovered, the tactic of discovered double check. Very powerful tactic um, where. So king c7, the, and the, then yeah, the response can is only to run. You cannot protect or capture a piece. Yeah, so so here black has two possibilities: king e8, king c7, and both are losing. Right, king c7 is what? What, what, what is white and doing? Bishop d8, mate. Bishop d8. Yeah, very good. Oof. And and king e8. So rook d8. Yeah, rook rook d8 checkmate. So very nice. Um, very nice illustration. Queen sacrifice, deflective sacrifice, decoying the king onto d8. Right. So very famous game. Ready, Richard Ready versus Sevilla Tartakow, Vienna, 1910. Yeah, most of the games in this, um, most if not all the games in this series, are from uh, classical. You know, real. They're real classical games in history that that are pretty famous. So, pretty cool. Uh, including, by the way, the um, everybody knows the opera game, right? Uh, Paul Morphy, where he sacrificed all the pieces and he ends up with a with a mate on on e8 on d8. Sorry. <laughs> so uh, there's actually a scene. I remember. Uh, I think. Uh, I, oh yeah, when she was Benny's, they were in Benny's apartment. They were playing. She was playing. This was kind of unreal, unrealistic. She's. I think she was playing like five minute games. Three simultaneous five minute games for money. She wins all of them constantly. And one of them was the, the was the opera game, the ending. <laughs> it's kind of funny. All right, so let's look at the next one. Let's see here. All right, so here, um, so the last move was rook takes um, h6, grabbing a pawn. What is the best move for black here? What do you think? Harmon is black. Don't you have to make a king move? Because rook h8 is potentially coming. And you can give a check, but then the king will threaten your knight. So I would right, think like right. Okay. So we're you have options, right? You've king e7, e8, g8, g7. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do you think? Okay, so king g7 and i'm looking at rook h5 king mm -hmm. g6 and the rook can go to h4 because there's a fork yep good um, it cannot go to e5 it cannot go to c5 it Oh yeah, that entire rank's gone. Fifth rank's gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. The knight's doing a really good job. Yeah, it's trapped actually. Yeah, the knight's doing a really good job on mm. d4. Very centralized, very powerful uh, uh, square in combination with the king on on d d2 um, eliminates all of the possible escape routes for the for the for the rook. Right. So knight forks are everywhere. Here, here, knight fork here, and knight fork here. Yeah, so very nice uh, illustration of um, yeah the uh, the active king. Uh, yeah, the power of having an active king really in the end game, very important. 
All right. So yeah. So this was between Towns and Harmon. Towns was the uh, I think it was the uh, it was like a journalist, but she's got like some kind of crush on him. But yeah, Towns and Harmon like to move and win. Uh, oh, I think it's I think it's famous. I, I think what he said in the series was uh, he says Harmon, you're humiliating my rook. <laughs> humiliating my rook. All right. Cool. All right. So next one is um, so this is a classic game between uh, Nezhmedinov and Kasparian. I think it's sometime in the early 20th century. Everybody familiar with who Nezhmedinov is? Right. Okay. Yeah. He had a very similar style to Tal. Uh, very brilliant sacrifices and wild combinations like that. And uh, I think there were just a few a few games between uh, when Tal and Nezhmedinov played each other. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it's funny to see two explosive chess styles playing each other over the board like that. Um, so yeah, and uh, I think apparently he he was probably he could have been strong enough to be a world championship contender, but something happened and he never actually made it. So and Kasparian, everybody, anybody familiar with Kasparian? He's a um, he's a very famous um, chess composer, chess puzzle composer. So there's a lot of puzzles that he's composed that have been pretty awesome okay so um so nezhmedinov is white harman is white here okay e4 c6 so we have a karakhan okay bishop g4 okay all right okay yeah, it looks like it looks like for the longest time white was baiting. He was baiting black. You know, he <laughs> white wanted uh, wanted black to push. There. He was just because you know for the longest time, I guess before the bishop move, he could have he could have went d4, right? But he chose not to. So he it seems like he really wanted black to push d4. Yeah, it's like finally. All right. All right. All right, so it looks like uh, White's trying to organize an attack on the king side. Let's see what happens here. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah. White's definitely got a the more active position here. Control and pressure on f6. Double rooks. Very nice. Black is kind of running out of good moves here. Ooh, nice move there. <clears throat> F5, bishop takes, queen. Okay. Bishop E6. Nice. Check. Bishop H3. Knight takes G6. Okay, so now continue for white here. What is the best move here? How's rook f6? Rook f6, right here? Mm. This, this one, right? Um, mm, good. Not that strong, but okay. You know, threatening here. Uh, maybe you can just take here. He looks pretty comfortable. Or, no, sorry, even worse. No, <laughs> you lose your queen. <laughs> Yeah, no good. Yeah, no good. Okay, what else here? What else you got? I'm trying to see if the queen sack on g6 opens up something. Uh, queen sack. What do you think? You want, to, you want to look at it? 
Queen takes. Rook of six. King takes. takes. Rook of six. Rook of six. Now what? Hard to see after King g7. No more. You need one more, another tempo. No more checks. Yeah, yeah. Here, but then the queen's just gonna. Yeah, now you're raid. done. Yeah, now no good. <laughs> what about rook f7 at the start there? Okay, so yeah, rook f7 was the move that was played. Rook f7. So I mean, the queen could sacrifice herself, or trade for the two rooks. It's possible. Um, let's see how that would end up. Check here. Mm. All right. Yeah, that looks pretty pretty good for uh, looks pretty good for white, right? So, so for that reason, um, not advantageous for black to trade the two rooks for the queen. So he, for that reason, he did not do that. He went king h6. Now what's the best move for white? Now I bet the queen sack works since you have the rook on f7. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, now, now the queen sacks make more sense, right? So queen takes g6, definitely. And king takes. Okay, now continue the attack. Actually, can you can you guys envision this is a this is a forced mate by the way. Can you can you envision the the forced mate without me moving the pieces? Okay, rook uh one to six, and then yep. king moves down. Okay. Rook uh, six to five. Okay. King goes back up. Okay. Rook seven to six. King goes to seventh rank, and now the rook on f five can go to the g file, or the h file. Or the h file, yeah. And then okay, so let's say he goes king. Uh, let's say he goes king. Uh, h. Okay, so king h seven. He... Rook h five. King g five. Then what? Okay. Sorry, can can you see the sequence again? So rook one to six. Yeah. Rook one to six. Let's say king h five. Rook one six to five. Yeah. Say king g six. Rook seven to six. Mm -hmm. Let's say king, king h seven. H seven. H seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. H seven. And now uh, rook g five. King h seven. Bishop no, f five. No, no, no. Rook h seven. Uh, rook h five. King yeah, eight? rook h five. Yeah, rook h five. And then it doesn't matter. King he has to go uh, to the he yeah. has to go to the G file. Yeah. So now yeah, sorry, uh, rook G five, and then now he has seven. to go to King H seven, and then Rook's you have Bishop F five. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. So that's something like uh, what is that? It's like a mate in six, I think. Awesome. Yeah. Very nice. So yeah, the the importance was having the rook on the seventh rank. That was the important thing here. So. Uh, what if sorry? What if King G seven first? Yeah, it doesn't uh, matter. It doesn't matter. He's still gonna still, still gonna... needs to end up on H yeah, seven. Yeah, okay, then goes H seven. Yeah, then yeah, yeah. H H seven is, is always the final square, and then uh, then Bishop mates. Sure. Yeah, very very nice combination there. <laughs> Starting with a Queen sacrifice. Very nice. So yeah, Nezmedino versus Kasparian. Old game, but uh, yeah, found its way in this series. Yeah, they did a really good job of like including these old games. It's pretty cool. All right, so next one is is when she played um, this child prodigy, this little kid, Russian kid, uh, Giev, and uh, and Giev was white, and Harmon was black. Now. Now, um, this is also um, a game played by um, a real game played by top GMs, uh, Dmitry Yakovenko, Yakovenko, and um, Daniel Stellwagen in um, Wickenzie in 2007. Okay, uh, so this is a, definitely a pretty top high, high uh, top level game here. Okay, so uh, so Harmon is black. E4, C5. So we have a Sicilian. 
By the way, I I, I play this I play this uh this uh variation a lot. I think it's called the Khan variation. Anybody play that? I I, I used to do Nate, Nador variation, but I like I don't know I like the Khan variation much better. I just like the position it yields. All right, so d4, c takes, knight takes, knight c6, knight c3. All right. Okay. All right. So going for the kingside attack. Okay. Trying to kick the knight away. Okay. All right. Wow. So it creates a little weakness here. I don't, know, I don't know if I would willingly do that, but okay. Yeah. All right, so starting a king side attack. Yeah, it seems like black has uh, has the initiative here. The attack is going pretty nicely for black here. White's attack is a little bit slow. Okay. All right, so entering the end game now. Material is equal. Okay. Yeah, white definitely has a much uh, nicer king. The black king is definitely pretty constrained with the g5 pawn and the bishop controlling the uh, a2 to g8 diagonal. Check. Check. Okay, so here, um, so actually, here is where actually they um, they departed from the uh, traditional game. In the in the real game, they did a uh, they did a move, but in the in, they did one move, and then in the series, um, Beth does a different move, which arguably is even better than what was actually played. <laughs> Sorry, Beth is white or black? Oh, Beth is um, Beth is. Uh, uh, hold on. I think you said black. Did I say black? Wait. Um, I'm getting confused. I'm, maybe I was wrong. No, I feel like Beth is supposed to be white here. I don't know. I, I think Beth is supposed to be white here. This like this position doesn't look great for white. Like I feel like if I got this in the game, I'd go for the repetition. Oh really? That's because the pawns on the G and H file are very hard to defend, right? Yeah, that's true. Um, so yeah, so so here in this position. Um, yeah, the, the, um, I guess Gary Kasparov and Bruce Pendolfini, they came up with an improvement for what was actually played. And that's what Beth played in this position. So what do you think is the best move here? What do you think? Takes H6 comes out. Okay. So you can take on H6. All right. Um, and then maybe, maybe that gives the rook time to come up here. And now you're gonna lose this pawn, um, and this pawn. It's not. I don't. It doesn't really look like uh, a threat because there's no real way to get it there to yeah. get to the promotion square. The king's protecting pretty well, so man, maybe h five then. So that if uh, black takes uh, the g pawn is more of a threat, right? Yeah, h five. Yeah, h five was the improvement that uh, that uh, Beth made, and and uh, the real game. Um, actually, uh, you know, you know, we'll do we'll do what, what Beth did. So h five, h five, right, and then rookie two to attack the um, to win the b two pawn. 
a4 to create an escape square for the king. Rook takes, king a3, h takes, h takes, and right, the guardian against the mate on h7, takes. And now, so now black has his pass pawn. Okay, so now what do you think best move is here for white? Rook h7? Yeah, yeah, trade away the pieces, right? Um, because this bishop is, is protecting g2 pretty nicely, pretty easily. And we have the two connected pass pawns here. So yeah, trade away... Um, just just eliminate any counterplay. Takes, takes. And just mark your pawns. Yeah, there's really no way that uh, these pawns can be stopped. Um, yeah. So yeah. So that's that was the improvement that they made on the on the game. So in the in the real game, uh, white played he did not play h five, he played rook takes b seven. So let's just go through the the finishing of the real game. Rook e two, king b three. Yeah, so it looks pretty drawish. Yeah. Yeah, bishop of opposite colors is uh is a tough one to win, definitely. <laughs> Wait, hold on. What wasn't the rook trade winning? Where? Uh here? Just right here. In this position? Yeah, because then you play a6 and you march your king up, and your bishop will guard the promotion square. Right. Uh, or, or, or you can even just blockade, okay, okay. just blockade with your king here, and uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So yeah, basically here I think the players agreed to a draw because um, yeah, it's kind of hard to make any headway, especially this being a, a an outside pawn, a or the h pawn are notorious for being drawish as well as bishop of opposite colors. So, so yeah. On the, Go I got a question for you on, on the game they did in the series where uh, just before um, they traded off the rooks, um, was there a reason you couldn't advance the g pawn for a check and then queen on you move the um, G6 to G7 check, and then G7 to G8 with check and protecting it with the bishop. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. And which move is this? Is this now or oh, wait before? Oh, on the on the on the Beth Harmon game before you jump back to the real one. Oh, oh, oh. So, so okay. Let's go back. Uh, okay, so you're here, right? Yep. So, so what were you saying? Is there a reason you can't just? Oh, never mind the bishop. I was I was looking at advancing the. The G pawn to from G six to G seven. Oh yeah, I, I wasn't seeing the bishop on the E five. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. So that forces a trade. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, all right, that's good. So that's that that game. And uh, yeah, and I think the uh, the producers of the uh, or the director of the of the of the series they 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 put Giev in in the like the having Beth Harmon as an adult playing as a child prodigy. <laughs> to make Beth feel uncomfortable because she was the child prodigy, <laughs> the focus in the series. I was just playing another child prodigy. So, so yeah, interesting juxtaposition there. All right. So, so this is another game uh, that was based on a real game. Um, so Harmon is white and Borgoff. I think this is the last. Yeah, this is the final game, I believe, um, and uh, of of the episode seven. And um, so white is uh, this is Ivanchuk Vasily. Ivanchuk versus Patrick Wolf, and this is the um, the Beal interzonal. Um, I believe somewhere in the nineties, maybe uh, something like that. I don't know, around there. All right, so um, so Harmon's white. So let's see what's going on with this one. All right, d forty five. This is a queen's gambit. Very apropos, right, for the last <laughs> for the last game. Okay.
Apparently, Borgoff was supposed to be actually played by Kasparov. It was supposed to be played by Kasparov? And Kasparov was like, eh, I'm too busy. Oh, really? That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. <laughs> Although, I'm sure a lot of people would have would have found complaint with that. You can't beat Kasparov that easily? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's that's so unrealistic. <laughs> All right. All right, so pretty equal so far. Whoa, look at that. Knight there. Nice. I guess in combination with the bishop and the queen coming here, I guess the, the He's not worried about sacrificing a knight here, I guess. All right. Cool. So, but queen's not coming there if you take the knight. Well, if you take the knight, pawn takes, and now, now the queen can come. Bishop, right. bishop takes for, I guess, after all the trades. But even then, you can block with the knight at the end, right? Bishop you takes on could. f4. Bishop takes. Oh, you oh, you want to you wanna take? No, no, you lose, you lose your... Oh, I am bad at counting. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. That's a good move. Targeting targeting F3. Very nice. Okay. All right, so we're reaching the position. Um, knight f3, h3, okay. Queen g6, okay. So now in this position here, this is the key position. Um, again, they they departed from the from what was actually played, um, and they had Beth Harmon play an improvement or what they thought was an improvement on the game. So it's white to play. What do you think is the best move here? So knight e6, and if, if black takes with a bishop, we get a passed pawn. Knight e6. Yeah, so that's the yeah that's the move that that best played knight e6. Yeah, um, and the move that was played in the real game was g4. Like I don't see a follow up of how exactly you'd exploit the passed pawn right away, but mm -hmm. it seems like a nice thing to have. Yeah, and and white uh, black is not forced to take the knight either, uh, so the pass pawn is not right. gu guaranteed, you know. Um, but yeah, that's the idea that but um, that white wants to create a pass pawn here. So, so yeah, so knight e six. But if black doesn't take, mm -hmm. um, can't we just take on g seven? Black doesn't. Oh right, take right, yeah, 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 yeah. So targeting g seven, yes, that's the other thing. That's true. Um, and I, I don't know, maybe is this possible? Maybe knight. If you don't want yeah, to take, yeah, I think that's something that's, like that's that. What, and now yeah. you're now you're attacking here twice. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Um, maybe you can take on d six. Maybe maybe take here anyway, and then something like that. I don't know. <laughs> if if you take on no, d six first, you're take... threatening the fork. Yeah. Take on d6. Take it. If you take on d6. Oh right, right. Yeah, right. Good point. Yeah. Now you're threatening a fork, right? Good. Yeah. So, so it's a double threat. Yeah. So it's a threatening. Yeah, threatening to take on g7 and threatening to take here. Threatening on the fork. Good. Yeah. So the knight has to be eliminated. So. Um. So before he did that, though, he he went rook a4. Um. All right. 
so maybe it seems like it, it seems like it wasn't a, an improvement right if like wh why well yeah if knight takes d6 now we're threatening the fork now he's forced to take back i mean i mean yeah he she ends up with the uh the pass pawn anyway so hmm uh, I don't think you want to take it at the end and let e4 drop. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, you got e4 here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, so let's see. Uh, so rook a4, and then she went so b3. Why not, why not just take on g7 now? g7 now? Let's see. I assume with the e knight, right? Um, I guess, yeah. It prevents right. a third attacker from I the queen, so... so. Uh, hmm. Well, okay, your e pawn falls. Yeah, it does fall, right? I think. What about taking on f five though? Or maybe taking with the rook, even, maybe. All right. Oh, taking on f five. Yeah, taking on f five. The knight comes back. I mean, same thing, I guess. The e pawn falls anyway. Although, maybe not. Mm, no, and then the rook comes, and then and then the queen takes here, All right? Uh, the queen's no, also no, defending. You oh, can take the bishop. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Now no, white is up a piece, right? So, hmm. <laughs> yeah, knight takes g seven. I mean, it looks good. Looks good to me. Um, yeah, so maybe you got to take with. With the well, it's kind of dangerous. I mean, this rook is kind of like precarious because now maybe b three, but then maybe he can he can throw in something like this and throw everything off, right? So now now g three is gonna fall because he's got to he's got to leave the second rank, right? Yeah, right. So. So yeah, interesting. Um, so yeah, rook a four, b three, and and now he took here. So hmm. I'm th I keep thinking, no, this doesn't work. Wait, no, it doesn't work now because you can take with the with the pawn, right? So if he takes the bishop, now we're threatening. He's threatening the fork, right? So bishop takes. Mm, now what are you gonna do? Oh, he, oh, you can take, you can take, take the rook, right? Yeah. Wait, wait. Then, then you got this. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Everybody see that? That's a good one. That's a good one. Threatening a fork in the king and the queen. <laughs> oh my god, this position is complex. Wow. So, <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> So yeah, anybody see anything better? <laughs> Starting from here. Rook takes e4. Yeah, so yes, yeah, so, go ahead. After taking on d6, uh, bishop takes e6, and you just take the bishop with a pawn. Bishop, bishop takes e6. You mean, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, then uh, d takes e6. And then d takes e6. Yeah. And now. So you have a passed pawn. Yeah, Pass and ball. you're still attacking the rook, so I guess he has to take the knight. So yeah, so it's black's move here. So black takes the knight. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. So this is how the game went on. Um, so yeah, the pawn can't be taken because the bishop's gonna fall. So she moves up. Uh, e7, d5, uh, bishop c5. Protecting the passer, queen e8, queen f3, queen c6. Yeah, so this is all this is all like new stuff that they concocted for the uh, <laughs> for the series. Um, okay, so he's just going back and forth. He can't, black can't do much here. Um, queen f5 check, improve her position a little bit, and then what do you think? Uh, oh, so I think at this point. At this point, um, um, black, this is kind of unrealistic in the series also that whenever one person was like, you know, Beth's opponent, they were in a worse position, they offered a draw. Like whoever does that, you know, it's like a mate in one and you offer a draw. It doesn't mean, 
<laughs> it doesn't make sense. <laughs> but it happens so many times in the series. Uh, so here, Borgov offers a draw, and Beth says no, declines. So what is what is White's best move here? What do you guys think? Take the rook. Take the rook. With oh. rook f8 coming, if the knight captures back. Take the rook, so you can oh, take, take with the pawn. I'm done. Yes. <laughs> it's okay. Pawns are real. What else? Okay, so queen takes f6, pawn takes f6, rook takes f6, and now we're threatening rook f8. Yeah, yeah, there's not uh, much. There's but not much. The, the, the problem is, a king's kind of open, and I'm mm -hmm. wondering if the rook can come down and then the queen can join later through the, say, g file mm -hmm. to throw some perpetuals. Yeah, so yeah, so that uh, was the uh, that was the move she played queen takes f6. Um, on take rook six, but king g7, and now uh. Um, King G seven and same thing. Rook Rook F eight. Right. I was just guarding the sure. Yeah, so Rook F eight and um and and uh, and and White's gonna Queen right. So sure. here, so um for that reason, um, Black played Queen H five, hoping for a perpetual. So unfazed, Beth went Rook F eight check King G seven. Under promote. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a possibility under promotion. Uh, I was thinking about that as well, but no, I guess not. Um, so, actually, actually, let's look at that. Is, is there is there anything to an under promotion? Check. Let me see here. No, I don't think so. Because um, I see I see this this possible knight fork here. I don't know if that's anything, but rook f six. Uh, then what? F6. Yeah, if only the rook wasn't there, right? <laughs> I mean, it's at least drawn, right? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, maybe under promotion is no good. Yeah. All right. So you got to get a queen. All right. So queen. Okay. So now, now, now black's only hope is for perpetual. So now king comes down, attacks the rook. Um, and now. Black sacrifices his rook, hoping for perpetual. Rook comes down to block. And now, what would you do as white here? King d2, and there's no more checks. Yeah, king d2. No more checks. And uh, <clears throat> in, a, in a very dramatic moment, uh, also very unrealistic, <laughs> Borgov takes his king in his hand, and he goes to shake her hand with his king in his hand. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> Every chess player knows. You know, well, why would you do that? This makes sense. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So right that down. actually happened uh, in real. Um, Fisher versus Spassky, game six, I think. Uh -huh. uh, that game, Fisher won, and at the end of the game, Spassky stood up and applauded. Oh yeah, no, I, that I happened. Think, because, but, yeah. But, oh, but, did, he but did he give? Yeah, the... yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. He didn't give him his king, right? Yeah, yeah, he didn't give him his king. But okay, I thought you were referring to the handshake. Okay. No, 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 no. Yeah, I was referring to giving. Like, who gives their king? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> I don't know, but it worked in the in the series. It's pretty cool. It's pretty dramatic, and uh, and uh, <clears throat> you know, everyone erupts in in applause, and you know, she's supposed world champion, and uh, yeah, so yeah. That's a couple of games from the Netflix series. So yeah, any uh, any questions, comments? What do you all think of it? Does it make you want to watch it, uh, Matt? What do you think? Uh, I'll probably finish watching. <laughs> did did did, you, did you, everyone enjoy it, or or did some of you think it wasn't like as as good as the hype? I, I thought it was good. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was very well done. Um, you know because. So many times when chess is uh, is uh, appears in movies and shows, they mess up like simple things like 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 the board setup, you know, the 
<laughs> you know, we all know the 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 light square has to be on the bottom right, and they mess that up, and then we all know, the, you know, queen starts on her color, and they mess that up. <laughs> so many things they mess up, um, but uh, it's so nice that they put so much attention to the details in this, and and it was it was so amazing that it appealed to um, chess players and non chess players alike. Like um, I think I don't know, was it some of you in here that said that? That your spouses saw it as well and they i don't know i heard that somewhere where someone said you know their spouse saw it as well and they said there's more than enough drama for me to enjoy this <laughs> even though i'm not a chess player <laughs> so yeah the the weird thing was how they were poking around at the theme with the hallucinogens but yeah moved her play and then at one point like around episode four mm -hmm almost look like her play suffered because she didn't use the hallucinogen, but then they quickly did away with, with that. They kind of moved beyond it. It was just, yeah. I wasn't sure where they were going with the whole. Yeah. It was nice that um, in the last episode, um, you know, she realized that she didn't need them to excel, you know, and to um, play well. So that was nice. You know, she abandoned both the alcohol and the, uh, and the, the pills, right? Spoiler uh, warning. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm assuming everybody's like, but yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I mean, yeah. I hear a lot of people say, you know, it's not good because a lot of drugs, a lot of alcohol. But you know, I mean, the message in the end is that she didn't eat him. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I enjoyed it, um, and uh, I, I'm adding it to the list of uh, chess movies and documentaries. And you know, actually, um, searching for Bobby Fischer, that was like the first movie that really uh influenced me when i first started playing in the in the 90s and late 90s and and since then there's really been an explosion of chess movies uh which is very nice to see um a bunch of them did, did i email everyone here my list of chess movies and documentaries that i emailed to all my students did i send you guys that uh, no? yeah i think i think we well i got it um i do remember seeing something like that i sent you a bunch right a bunch of them yeah, there's like uh, a bunch of them. There's like uh, the, the little game and there's Queen to Play. There's Queen of Katwe, Search for Bobby Fischer, Magnus, um, Life of a King, all different kinds of movies that use chess like as a central theme. And uh, they do a pretty good job. Harry Potter. Say again? I said Harry Potter. Harry Potter. No, no, that's not a chess movie. <laughs> the first one. Although, although do the you know? The first one. Say again? The ending of the first one. Yeah, 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 no. And uh, although, you know, that that position was composed by Jeremy Silman, mm. uh, he was consulted for that. So it's a pretty good, pretty good puzzle. Pretty cool puzzle. Um, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> not really a chess, a chess movie. But um, but yeah, and then there's also another one that came out this year, Critical Thinking. Uh, it's on Amazon Prime. I didn't see it yet, but I, I, I will and I have to see it uh, by, by and star. I think it's starring John Leguizamo. So, yeah, so just a lot of movies with chess as a central theme. And it's pretty cool. Some of them are true stories, like Life of a King is a true story of a guy who started a chess club. He was an ex-convict. He played chess in prison, came out, and he started a chess club and helping inner city poor kids um, and, um, you know, helping get their lives back on track through chess. So very cool um, stories like that. You know, I love seeing that. So, yeah, that's uh, Queen's Gambit Netflix series. So, um, what about for next week? This, let's see. We have uh, yeah, we have two weeks left. So, any any suggestion for next week? Any anything you want to look at? Go over specific game. Anything? What do you think? Or should I just pick from my extensive library of lectures? What do you think? <laughs> no. I'm okay with uh, any strategic themes or ideas. All right. All I'm right. fine with it. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I, I assume you guys enjoyed the middle game strategy, right? We were working on the middle game strategy with, like, pawns or or breakthroughs or exchange sacrifices or um, things like that. Um, yeah. So, all right. I can do something like that. Middle game. I know we can all use uh, improvement in that middle game. Um, also, end game is something as well that a lot of people neglect <laughs> you know because i think maybe people have this idea that end games are simple because there's less pieces on the board but not simple but technical so it's like yeah yeah technical yeah it, it, it seems much more plausible that like 
I can just solve it with brute thought. <laughs> right, compared right. To middle game. right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. End games are uh, is a beast in itself. <laughs> Whole another animal. Cool. All right. So, um, so yeah. So I'll figure out something uh, for next week, and uh, hope you guys have a great uh, Thanksgiving. You too. Sir. All right. Good Take chatting care. with you guys. So have a great night. Good night. Take yeah. care. Bye.